Welcome, Moises. Hello, how are you? Very intriguing, huh? So yeah, we'll see how it's going, all bad. <laughs> you bring all the answers, so... Well, we'll try. All okay. yours, Moises. Good. Hello to everybody. We are going to try to explain a bit how we can explain artificial intelligence. And this is something about me. If you want to contact to me, you can write me an email, send me a message or anything related with artificial intelligence or data in one of my social networks. And okay, we are going to start. But first, I'm going to remember what really, really, really interesting side from something that someone that is really, really important right now. This sentence was for Sundai Pichar, the CEO of Google, in which he said that the artificial intelligence will be more important than fire and electricity, or maybe the internet will be the next step in our evolution. Okay, but what about is this talk? It's about explainable or unexplainable? And this is the most important question that we are going to try to answer in this talk. But why it's important explain the artificial intelligence system? Okay, first we are going to try to start why we need this explanation. And after that, we are going to try to describe how we can generate that explanation to know what is happening with our artificial intelligence system. Because maybe they can rebel, but we will know before of that. Okay, good. The first problem that we have right now with the artificial intelligence is that it's uh, starting to be in our life, in many things that we use commonly. For example, the cars. In some years, we will have cars that are driving totally alone using artificial intelligence. But more important thing, we are using artificial intelligence in medicine to try to detect some disease and we be sure that this information is correct. But there are more things. Sometimes we have to understand which are the decisions that are taking complex systems based on artificial intelligence. Because sometimes done decisions are not really good for us, but are correct. And we need to know that sometimes machines are better than us solving some problems. Okay, then it's important to know why they found that kind of answer. <laughs> but there are more. Okay, I guess that everybody answer about this. Do you know why Netflix say you, you have to watch this series or this TV show or this movie? And you have an 94% of that? Okay, I want to know every day that I open my Netflix, but no one say me. And I want to know why, because sometimes that suggestion is horrible. And most important now that we are close to the Black Fridays, okay, we need to understand why we have recommendation about some products. Is that really true? It's something that I need, it's something that I want, or it's something that maybe the artificial intelligence is manipulating to make us buy that product. But again, we don't have any explanation about that. And it's something important. But more important thing about that, it's medicine. Now we are starting to use artificial intelligence to try to identify disease or something that happened to the human. And okay, we are totally sure that artificial intelligence is capable to see what happened there better than medical doctors. We have to be sure and understand why they identify something that we can't. But this is something that is a start to happen for many other reasons, because it's going to be the law in the future. Now in the European Union, they are preparing a new regulation for artificial intelligence. And we are dividing the AI system in different categories. And there is one, the highest one, in which we need to know what is happening there and why we get that answer when we talk with an artificial intelligence. And more important thing, we need to know that there is an artificial intelligence system interacting with us. And this is, not something, this is not something that is happening in Europe. It's something that it's in many countries, like United States, Australia, Canada, and other countries like Japan, or other of them. Not in China, in which artificial intelligence is commanding everything, but here in Europe, or in different Western countries, this is happening. We have to regulate the artificial intelligence. And to do that, we need to know what is happening inside. And okay, now we have why we need the explanation. Now we are going to try to understand how is working an artificial intelligence system and, it, and try to see if there is a possibility to try to explain what is happening there. Okay, 
when we are working with an artificial intelligence system, if we are lucky and we know that there is something artificial there, we have something like that. We have the AI system, which is taking information from different people, the internet, or many different sources, and we have personal information or user information. And after all of this information, if we send to the system, we get an answer. And sometimes it's important to know what's happening with this answer. And this is not only something for the user, it's something for all the people around of the system. We have, for example, people that is creating the system, like the data scientists or the IT people, that need to know how to monitor the answers of the system, or they need to know if the answer that we are generating, that prediction, it's correct, it's right. And sometimes it's impossible to know if the model is extremely difficult or the AI system is super complex. But more, if we are, for example, the customer people of the company, we need to know if the answer are correct, if everything is okay, or if the information that we are generating, that answer, is not breaking any law, or there is not any kind of problem with the data that we are using when we try, when we try to generate this kind of AI system. Okay, then there is a way to generate all of this information, but unfortunately, now there is not. This is the typical artificial intelligence system that we are creating. We have the data, which is the input. We have that magic black box in which we have the model, we have the rules, we have anything. And usually, maybe, we have like a wrapper that is around of the application to simplify many things related with the AI. And once we put the information in the input, we get an answer. And now the answer is unexplainable. There is not information that we can use to say, this is right, this is correct, there is an error, this information is okay. It's the information, it's okay for us, we say, oh good, this is working very well. But if not, we say, okay, it's artificial intelligence, this is not working really well, this is something that it's only for commercials, it's only for try to say that we are doing something special. But now we are trying to do this in a different way. Something like this, in which the explanation is the most important thing. Now the artificial intelligence system is explainable. Then there is a way to get the information from the answer and try to get an explanation. And this explanation must be clear for the user. This means that the user need to understand the explanation of the answer. Because the user can generate a feedback that could be useful for the system, and the information of the user can be monitoring. And now we have something that is perfect, because the answer of the system is explainable. Maybe it's not a perfect explanation, but there is more than nothing. And we try to find a way to do that in the system that we have currently. OK, then why? we can do all of this with the system that you usually use. Here we can see different kind of artificial intelligence system which are sorted about the complexity of the models or the rules that are generating. The first one is the easy one, the typical rules-based system in which we are putting normal rules that can be generated manually or maybe with an automatic system. After that, we have something really typical right now, like the random forest, linear models, which is really, really useful. But now they are starting to be a bit obsolete. After that, we have the new revolution, the deep learning and the stable methods. And finally, we have something that is experimental, the meta-learning system. But once we are using all of this system, the complexity of the model of the AI system that they are generating, it's more complex. Then if we go to the meta learning system, the model is extremely complex and it's really difficult to explain. Then the complexity follow the problem to explainable. This is something that happening usually. If the model, it, if the model is really, really complex, the explanation is more complex than that. That is something bad because we need to generate really complex system for explanation for really complex model. But it's possible. And now we are going to try to see how we can explain the machine learning models. Why machine learning model? Because it's the most common thing that we are using right now to generate artificial intelligence in the industry, in the different companies, 
and maybe in the Rexier area. But this is the common thing, and it's the thing that the companies are doing to try to offer services to the normal people. Okay, then this is happening commonly when we are using artificial intelligence. Okay, we have a system that tries to identify something from a picture, and sometimes it's confused. Okay, in one side we have a puppy or we have fried chicken. We are not sure. Both are quite similar. And now we don't know why there is a puppy or why there is a fried chicken, because there is no information. There is not any kind of explanation about that. It happens exactly the same if we are trying to create a model to try to identify that kind of dog that is quite similar to a muffin. Then again, we have an answer, but we don't have an explanation. As I said before, this is the common thing that we have right now. This thing is the typical supervised machine learning system in which there are a black box that is where the magic is happening and we have an answer which is the prediction. But what is inside? Okay, inside we have two typical pro pro process. The first one is the training one in which we are using the answers and the data and we are going to generate a model. Maybe it's a good model, maybe it's a math model. I don't care about that, it's a model it's an artificial intelligence. And after that, if we want to put that model in a system, we have to make an inference process, which is the phase in which we use the model. And we put information from the user and we get an answer. And again, that answer, it's only an answer. We don't know it is right, this is wrong, it is okay. We only have that. Maybe it's not the answer that we want, but we don't know exactly why we had that answer. And this is an important thing. Then, how can I explain the answer? Right now, impossible, because the system doesn't have an explanation system to try to understand what is happening inside of the black box. But now, we can to try to generate an answer in a machine learning model. And the question is, how can I do that? How can I create that explanation? OK, this is easy. We have to do something like that. Now we have to put an interpretation system that taking the inference answer and after that is generating an explanation and the answer. And now the user that send the data to the system now know what is the answer and have an explanation. And then the user can start to think about this is okay, this is not okay, the answer it's okay because the explanation is really good and it's clear or not. And now we know that the artificial intelligence is working, maybe not in a well way, but it's working because we know what is happening there. Okay, good. And which are the techniques that we usually use in machine learning to create these explainables? Okay, it's possible to make explainability in machine learning? Yeah, the answer is yes. We have different techniques that allow us to do something like that. The pictures show in this case, an image and some uh, small areas in green, which has the important things that the machine learning model use it to know that there is a dog there. And how to do that is to use in different kind of algorithm that allow us to do that. We have three basic algorithm. Okay, there are some more, but these are the most important ones. We have the best algorithm and the first one is the sample algorithm in which we have to sample it sample system. We have the second one, which is the integrated gradients algorithm in which we are introducing more complexity. And finally, we have the best algorithm that we have right now for picture, which is the X-ray algorithm. That is the one that created that picture that we can see in the slide, in which we know which are the areas of the picture that are important to understand that that is a dog. Okay, but now we are going to see how is working this algorithm. Because each one of the algorithm is only useful for one kind of models. The first one, the sample itself, is the one that we use when we have to analyze tabular information or creating models based on tabular data. This is typical classification or regression models for traditional machine learning system. The second one, the integrated gradients, it's an evolution of this one focused in neural networks in which we are working with really big data, big amount of data in which we have a large number of attributes. 
which in the case of the first one is not working really well. And even if we want, we can try to use X-ray image, which are really simple images that work in really well with this. And finally, we have the most advanced one, which is the X-ray, the one that we are going to describe in detail in some minutes. And this is the new evolution of the second one in which we are trying to extract information from the picture to try to identify the explanation over the answer that we are generating when we create a machine learning model to identify pictures or image. Okay, well, who is working any of this algorithm? The first one, the sample simply, is the easy one, is the first one that we use it to try to explain what is happening there. And it's based in the game theory algorithms, in which we are doing something like giving a reward or a score or some punctuation, some information to any player of the game. And everybody thinks, okay, we are talking about machine learning. There is no player here. What's happening? Okay, in this case, the players are the attributes. And we are giving some score to each attribute to try to understand what is the importance of the attribute in the definition. Okay, to do that, we have to use that large equation, which I'm not going to explain, but I'm going to give you an example to try to understand what happened there. Okay, good. This is the example that we are going to use. Imagine that we want to create a regression model in which we want to predict the price of a house, okay? And we are going to use four attributes. If we are close to a park, okay, which is something important right now, the floor and how big is the, is the building and if the building allow pets inside. That's it's something important for some people. And using these four arguments, okay, these four attributes, we are going to try to predict a price, the information that we can see. Okay, which is the different step that we need to follow to use sample supply, okay. We have to do something like this. We are going to try to generate all the possibilities between the combination of the different attributes. If we are lucky, all the possibilities is gonna be in the training data, but this is not gonna happen. Then we have to work with the information that we have. And once we have all of this information, okay, all the possibilities that are available, we are going to compute something like a number, which is the sample sample number, it's like a magic number, that allow us to know how important it's an attribute for each example. And this is the way that we are going to use to try to understand if an attribute is important or not for the prediction. For example, if the sampling number for the pets is always zero, this means that that is not important for the price of the building, or in this case, of the house. And then we can do two things. We can print the attribute, or we don't care about that. And this is the way in which sample supply is working. And now we are going to see who we can use sample supply to generate an integrated gradient, because this kind of algorithm is not working really well with neural networks. And deep learning is based on neural networks. Okay, the, in the integrated gradients is an evolution of the sample supply in which we are using not the attributes, we are using the gradients. And what is that? What is the gradient? Okay, this is something that is inside of the neural network process. When we are training a neural network and we are trying to retrain after every example, we are computing something that we call the gradient. And this gradient is the number that we usually use to update the structure, not the structure, the values of the neural networks. And then we can try to improve the model that we are generating into the neural network. That is really good, but okay, how we can use that in the inference? Because we are training right now. And if you remember, the training was before of the model generation and the inference is the ones in which we need the explanation. Okay, then we try to compute the gradients in the inference true. That is not something common. But now, if we do that, we can try to get the gradient value and compute something similar to know if the attribute is really important or not. That is good because we can generate something like a graph that we can see in the slide in which we know if the attribute is really important for the prediction or not. 
if the attribute has a zero, is that that attribute is not important. And this is really good because we can prune it. It's not important for the model. We don't know what's happened with it, but in the explanation, nothing is happening. Good, but if we have other kind of attributes, we can to see if this is important or not. In that case, in the example, we can see that there are some attributes that have a negative value, that means that are not really good for the prediction, and in other case, we have some attributes that have a positive value. And in that case, means that it's really, really important for the prediction. Good, then we can show something like that to the user, and the user can know if something happening in the prediction, can see which is the attribute, the information that the user is sending or the algorithm is using to make the prediction, it is important or not for it. Good, now we know how is working integrated gradients, but we go more. That is the important thing, which is the thing that we need to know how it's working, the X-ray algorithm. This is an evolution of the previous one that try to do exactly the same, okay, not exactly, with some chains over image. And now, when we are working with image, we don't have attribute. That's totally true. But the pixels of the image are the new attributes that we have in the X-ray algorithm. And how is working the X-ray algorithm? Okay, imagine that we have that picture that you can see. The first thing that we have to do is to try to execute over the picture something like the integrate gradients. Okay, we run this algorithm in a similar way that we explained over the picture. But in this case, we are using like a black and white model over the picture. Why? Okay, because we are ranging the values of the pixel, which are between the black and white colors. And now, once we have that information, which is something like the, okay, the value or the accuracy or the importance of every pixel over the prediction, we have to do another thing. We introduce a new kind of algorithm that is not something new, it's something really old. That's one, one of the algorithms that we usually, 30 or 40 years ago, to try to do artificial vision to extract information of the picture. Now we are making a segmentation of the different areas of the picture. And now, once we have these two information, we are going to combine it in a process in which we join the importance of the pixel over the segments, the different areas, that we detect with the other algorithm. Now we have that color areas in yellow, in green, over the picture that we are analyzing or the picture we are trying to get an explanation. Okay, and this information, the color that we have here, it's really, really important. If we are close to the yellow, that means that the pixel in that area are really, really important for the prediction. They are the important part of the pictures that are good to know what is there. And if we are close to the purple or green or purple or blue, is that that information is not really good for the prediction. It's not important. We don't care about that. There is not information about our model. Okay, that's good. Then we have like a rank in which we know which are the good pixel and which are the bad pixel to know what is happening there. And after we have that, we can start to try to see what is happening there. Finally, the thing that we do, it's something like that. We can take it those areas that are close to the yellow, and that is the information that we are using to explain what is happening there. In this case, we have some bears or a butterfly, and that is the class that we are going to generate. Okay, then now the user have this information to know why the model say that there is that kind of animal or insect inside of the picture. Okay, good, and that is perfect, that is work, but if I want to do that for my models, how can I do that? There is any tool, there is any algorithm that I can use, there is any way to do that in my current machine learning models? Yeah, that is, but there is only in one cloud. Currently, the X-Ray algorithm, it's only available in the explainable AI system that Google Cloud has there, and okay, this is a shame because if you are using other kind of cloud, you can use it, but maybe you can take the algorithm and try to run into the system. But now, the best option is to use Google Cloud. And where is this algorithm? It's inside of Vertex AI, 
which is the new tool for training, deploying, and monitoring machine learning algorithm, in which there is an a special box that we call explainable AI. And to do that, we have to do the next. OK, sorry, there is a mistake here. This is the first part. We have to install the libraries that we need. Of course, we need TensorFlow. But we need the SDK for explainable AI that Google has available that can be installed, that we can see in the picture. And after that, we can do the same. We have to generate the different function that we need to define the input and the output of the picture that we are going to use. Because this model is going to be in the cloud. And we have to define a standard input to process any picture or image that we can use to try to get the explainable and the prediction. Good. After we define all the function that we need, all this function for preprocessing, for explanation, for everything, we can uh, start to defining our methods. And now we have to define how it's going to work our machine learning model with explanation. And if we want to put into the cloud, we have to do something like that. OK, if you can see the, pre the last one parameter, not the last one, the second, if you are starting at the end, OK, is a definition of the explainable method that you, can, that you want to use if you, put, if you upload this machine learning model to the cloud. And there, you can put X-ray, or if you want, you can put integrated system. Or even, if you want, you can choose the sample sampling sample method. Now, when you finish this process, your model is ready. You can uh, start it to use it. And the way to use it is this way. This is the way in which we can send an example, an instance, and we can try to get a prediction and unexplainable. And, OK, good. How is that explainable? But it's something like this. Do you know what is this? Maybe it's a lion. Maybe it's a cat. Maybe it's a beaver. I don't know. OK, we are going to try to see the information, the raw information that the X-ray gives to us. Because this information is the ones in which we only choose that special areas that are really, really important to explain. OK, no, it's not a cat, it's not a beaver, it's not a dog, it's not a lion. It's a raccoon. And our model say that it's a raccoon with a score of 84%. OK, it's a baby raccoon. It's cute. And we have an explanation about what happened there and why the machine learning models say that that is a raccoon. Good. But we can try to do more. For example, we can try to try to identify things like that. In this case, we don't know what is happening there. The explanation is really, really complex. And the human can understand what is there, but the machine can. Imagine what is going to happen in 20 years, where the machines only use some information of the big picture or the long videos to identify anything that are in the picture. And as I say at the beginning, sometimes machines are better than humans. And we need to understand why they choose one answer, even if we don't understand really well. OK, to finish, the last thing that I want to say is that in Paradigma Digital, we are hiring. And if you want to join to our team to do things like this, you can send me an email or contact with our people team. And cool. There is no more things, and um, please, if you have any question, let me know. Okay. Wow, thank you so much, Moises. My head is about to explode, but apart from that, we're fine. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Take your time, because that was nonstop. We have a few questions, but not much time. So they ask you, and take your time, actually, because okay. they ask you, can you use the explainability models for chatbots? Yeah. Maybe you can use, if the chatbot has a machine learning model inside, that is possible. And usually, mostly of the chatbot are using a machine learning model to generate the answer. Then, that is possible, but we can see, depending on how the chatbot has been generated. Okay, uh, totally agree. I totally agree with him, of, of course. Uh, they also ask you, uh, there is also a very similar library for IBM for XA, XI AI, sorry. Uh, do you have any comment about the similarities, differences, any preference? Uh, preference? Okay, mostly of the libraries for explanation have mostly of these algorithms. But in the case of the X-Ray, it's only available now in the Google Cloud Platform. 
because it's someone, it's something that they develop it inside of their platform. But I suppose that in the future, this algorithm is gonna move to the different platform and in another kind of libraries. But the, but the last version, it's only there. Okay. Uh, working in AI, in a way, is like having a magic um, crystal ball and predicting the future. So uh, it's a must question. What uh, is the next big thing, as this is the Big Things Conference, what is the next big thing that you are looking forward to? Or are you expecting or give okay, us some? First, <laughs> I think that artificial intelligence is not magic. It's only maths and numbers there. There is some formulation, there is some linear and non-linear functional equation, and there is no magic. But it's a bit complex and we can understand all of that. But I think that the next step is to try to move these explainable algorithms to other kind of artificial intelligence which are more complex than much learning. For example, heuristic search, automatic planning, or other kind of artificial intelligence tools. And maybe that is the next step, or maybe another kind of artificial intelligence that maybe we can see in the next years. We'll see in the next bit things. Well, we will we, we'll stay tuned. Uh, being from Paradigma Digital, of course, you're part of the family uh, Big Thing Conference. Yeah. When he was coming in for uh, his uh, talk, uh, Moisés was saying, oh, how good was Rubén no? from Neutral? His, uh, if you haven't seen the talk, you just came for, for Moisés. Please try to watch that in YouTube uh, later on. What are you looking forward in this next big uh, conference, uh, next uh, big things conference 2021, Ruben? Which is uh, obviously from what we've seen. Is there anything that shocked you, you were expecting or not? And tell our viewers for uh, tomorrow, because we only have one last uh, keynote this afternoon. What should they shouldn't miss? Obviously, nothing at all. But okay, depending of where <laughs> is your area. Okay, we have talks for everybody, not only for artificial intelligence. There are talks for people that is working in the different areas of the competition. Then, if you want to learn, if you want to discover something new, you can to watch the next day all the talks of some of them in the big things. Then it's something in which, in which, in where you can discover new things that can be useful for you, or only to increase your curiosity about other things like this, for example. Well, this is a big change from last year because yeah. from a year. Uh, a lot of new things have come. I was expecting the Jupiter notes and... Uh, but every year there is something <laughs> new. Okay, we'll see what is happening in the next year. But I'm totally sure that it's going to be something great. Well, but give us something. Give us a bit more. Ruben, come on. I mean, uh, Moises, give us... Uh, what are you working on now, apart from... Uh, what, what is... Come on, come on. Okay, <laughs> for example, we are trying to... Working with Federated Machine Learning. Okay. It's something that we told last year, but now mm -hmm. it's starting to work more mm -hmm. because there are many devices in the world. And okay. now, for example, the personal information is starting to be really, really important. Then maybe in the next year, yeah. artificial intelligence is going to be more personal, more in your device, more yeah. only for you. And it's going to be combination with other people, but without sending your personal information. Because I don't know, but I don't want my pictures in any place in the world yeah. training new models. And in the future, that is going to happen because privacy is going to be super important in artificial intelligence. This was mentioned this morning uh, during the, the first half of the day about the, the importance of personalizing the uh, AI. But you started your talk talking about Netflix and other similar platforms, let's say, and they all suggest, but they are not so good. Why? Yeah. What's, what's, what's missing? Because when they are taking your information, putting it in the server, and they know everything about us. And maybe we don't know. We want to control what kind of information it's sending and if the explanation that we have for the artificial intelligence is okay with us. Because maybe the explanation and the answer are not only for us, are the answer that the company wants. And ah. maybe that is not good for well, us. We, we, have to, we have to sort that. Actually, uh, Sandra Timon from Microsoft yeah. and Anne, they were mentioning when, when we want to go to a restaurant, I don't even want to read the, the, uh, the menu anymore. Just tell me what I want. Sometimes we do actually want them to tell the, what we want, but according to our needs and what we really uh, like. I, I, I don't want to read what? the menu, but I don't want that my information were mm. there in the world. So then where we is have the limit? to find a balance exactly. between which information we want to share and we not. But of course, we want artificial intelligence to improve our so lifestyle. Personalization and privacy are. It's possible. Is it possible? Of course. 
Yeah, we can try line. to do with all the kind of tools that we have, like federated machine learning, for example. That Ooh. is starting to grow during the COVID. That federated machine learning, you know, federated machine learning. Just one last thing, uh, Moises, uh, we mentioned a few books. Uh, we're going to talk about Richard Benjamin's book that we actually have amongst our uh, prices. If you are, you know, um, accumulating big points, give us a, give us a title, something that you're studying, uh, okay. reading, uh, for even me, if it's a novel, a romantic one, novel. One, one of the most <laughs> good. For me, there are two big books, one is Heuristic Search, and the other is the one that Peter Nordic wrote about artificial intelligence and the That's fundamentals of all of this. For me, are the best in that, but depends on the people. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, oh my God, uh, uh, so much information, so interesting. We thank so much Moises, Moises Martinez from Paradigma Digital. He's coming for sure next year with a lot of, of new stuff, an old one that he's working on. So thank you so much, Moises. You're welcome. <laughs> It's been a pleasure.